Welcome to the Dreamscape Environment Project. This project is inspired by the beautiful Dreamscape Asset Collection by Poly Art Studio and the impressive Electric Dreams Environment Project by Epic Games. The idea of this project is to generate a whole world with Unreal Engine's procedural content generation framework. I started experimenting with PCG when it was released in Unreal Engine 5.2. The first version of this project was developed with 5.3 as part of my master thesis where I wanted to find out how far I can get with the current state of the PCG framework and what else would I need to reach my goal of a procedurally generated world. The first and maybe most important question, how are huge gaming worlds created? Well the answer was quite simple when I thought about the biggest world in a video game I know, which is Minecraft. Fortunately, the way how Minecraft worlds are created is not a secret, but quite well documented in different videos out on the internet. So if you're interested in that, check them out on YouTube. I will go with a very basic explanation here. Minecraft is made out of blocks or voxels. Each block contains several values generated from different noise patterns. The combination of these values allows us to separate the world into different biomes. For example, blocks with a high temperature and a low humidity will turn out as a desert biome, while low temperature and high humidity will be generated as taiga biome. Thanks to our noise patterns, all we have to do is specify a value at which one biome ends and the other begins. And that's how I brought the Minecraft approach into Unreal. First, I created surface sampler nodes with different grid sizes. Then I used the spatial noise to create an attribute called biome to split the points in different biomes. For now I aimed for a forest and the grassland biome which differ slightly depending on the altitude. So I have four biomes in total. The different grid size points are used to spawn different assets. Small grids become grass and flowers, larger grids become trees or for the largest grid size more unique objects like a mage tower, a farm or something like that. More on that in a minute. The rest is basically just adding different assets in the right places to generate a convincing landscape. This is where PCG already did a fantastic job. With partitioning and hierarchical generation it's quite easy to generate the world even during runtime. With a nice way to generate biomes, I turned to the question of how hero objects such as stone circles, houses or mage tower can be integrated on the one hand and generated on the other. While all hero objects are more or less independent from the biomes, they all have to be integrated seamlessly into them. To take care of that, the generation stream is designed from unique to generic. So points for hero objects get picked first, unused points are forwarded. Let's take a look at the generation of a farm. In the 5.3 version of the project I used a spatial noise to generate roads, which did not work out that well, but there was just no other option. This will change in 5.5 with the built-in pathfinding function. So first I had to find all points on or close to a road and check the terrain to be flat enough. After that I increased the extents of the points to get enough distance between the different farm areas. Now I used the smaller grid size points that were intersecting with the big point, calculated the distance to it and added some randomness to cut out the hero object area. This allows me to spawn specific assets and send unused points back to the stream to end up in the biome generator that integrates the object perfect in the specific biome. While I used pre-built houses for the farms, in case of the mage tower I tried to generate it out of its base parts. In 5.3 this required some custom blueprint nodes which are quite heavy on the CPU and I cannot recommend using them too often. The cylindrical shape made the generation a lot easier because every asset could be just moved away from the center point and just had to face its origin. No taking care of different sides or something. In the end it was just a matter of adding points to the various assets and spawning smaller objects on them while adding some randomness. In 5.5 the generation of buildings will be hopefully much easier with the new implemented grammar functionality. Of course, there were and there are still some pitfalls you need to know about or even work around. The biggest pain is still Unreal's landscape object that cannot be modified during runtime. So you have to work with pre-made landscapes or use a third-party voxel plugin. I really hope the undated next generation terrain solution will bring a solution for that. And also for the problem of changing the texture of the landscape when spawning different assets. For the moment I am working with some kind of auto landscape material that uses a runtime virtual texture as a mask for different surfaces. 
Sounds complicated. Basically, they are just invisible planes spawning under, for example, trees or roads. These planes draw into different channels of an RVT and generate the mask. It works, but it is limited to the amount of channels the texture has. You might be wondering why not drawing the texture directly. Using it as a mask only allows me to render it with a much lower resolution for better performance and texture quality. And that's basically all. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment and thanks for watching.